Troy Stubbs, head of the Elmore County Commission, thank you so much for being with me today. A few days ago, you all put a letter out, you and the Otaga County Commission, saying that we are ready to, our citizens are ready to reopen. And I really appreciate your leadership in that. I think that we do have very responsible citizens and this is a good thing to do. But the governor just came out with her guidelines for reopening. And she said retail could open with 50% capacity. And basically that's it. Close contact was not addressed. So tell me your biggest takeaways and especially now you've had time to actually read the order. So you know a little bit more. Tell us what the big takeaways are. Yeah, so we spent a lot of time reviewing the order. Obviously, a week ago, we, the county commission, along with the Otago County Commission and the mayors, all signed a letter asking for some flexibility with our local leadership. Uh, obviously, this should not be a one-size-fits-all approach. Uh, President Trump directed all the governors to do what they needed to do in their respective states, and we hoped that the governor would allow us in our respective counties to do the same. Uh, the recent order that just came out uh, within the last couple of hours uh, did have some positives. The 50% occupancy for retail, uh, that is moving in the right direction. However, uh, some uh, there were really no changes in the restaurants. Uh, they're still just doing curbside and takeout. Um, you know, hair salons, nail salons, barber shops. Uh, bars all still restricted and, and really uh, not available for any services. Uh, pretty disappointing. I think that uh, there can be arguments made that uh, you know our local citizens, the citizens of Alabama are very capable of following protocols and protecting their health and their customers' health. And I just hope that they would be given the opportunity to prove themselves. So many people that I have talked to during this crisis and especially during the shutdown are independent contractors and they're not receiving any unemployment or any government benefits and they are running out of money. And these are people, some who own small businesses or work at a small business. And we have a lot in Elmore County. What, what's the answer for these people? Do they civilly, you know, do civil disobedience because they've got to feed their families? Um, I don't know, what do you tell these people? Yeah, it's, it's really frustrating uh, that there are individuals who are finding themselves in those circumstances. And my heart goes out to them. I have considered, you know, how can I as an individual try to support them? You know, some of these barber shops and beauty salons do have some retail in them. You know, they sell various products and that may be a way that we can work to try to help them over the next few weeks. You know, that's something I've personally thought about is, you know, maybe maybe the shampoo that we buy or something like that, we don't need to get it at Dollar General or Walmart. Maybe we need to find our local beautician and, and do something there. So, you know, I don't know the answer. I do know that um, we have got to find a way as, a, as leaders in our community to express our feelings to our state leaders and our federal leaders where they have an understanding of what we are capable of doing on a local level. And I'm still trying to navigate that. I'm not a career politician. I'm, I'm a father, I'm a small business owner, and trying to navigate through that has been difficult. But I do think that there are ways that we can express how we feel. Civil disobedience is obviously something that people are talking about. I don't know that we need to go that far because I do think, again, we are creative. We are innovative. We can find ways around some of these guidelines, not to circumvent them, but to, to find a way to support these businesses without bringing harm upon ourselves. I just hope that no other city in Alabama does what the city of Birmingham did. Um, that is, you know, seeing that, follow the press conference, you know, I don't want to see any other dominoes fall. Yes. And that, that was the ordinance that if you're in Birmingham, you must have a mask when you go outside for ages two and up, and you'll get a $500 fine if you don't have one or 30 days in jail. So to me, that seems like a more restrictive order than we currently have right now. And these will go in effect um, on the 30th of April. 
tell me about the website that you all have set up. Yeah, so through our Elmore County Economic Development Authority, we've established a website. The URL is openelmore.com. We encourage everybody to go there. What we've done is created a platform by which we can provide our local business owners resources so that they know and understand the orders that have been put out. What they can and can't do based on the orders is strictly informative. We're not uh, trying to dictate what people do or don't do, but we do want uh, things to be clear for them. And we want to be a, a, a place that can navigate through some of the confusing parts of any orders and help people move forward and open quickly. Because we do know that some of the protocols that are put in place, some of our businesses may not be ready to open Thursday at 5 p.m. Uh, so we want to help them be prepared to open as soon as they possibly can. Tell us about the hospital situation in Elmore County. Yeah, so Elmore Community Hospital is a great resource here in our community. Uh, they have been impacted tremendously uh, from this uh, stay-at-home order and the restrictions placed on the elective surgeries. Uh, several weeks ago, they were in a position where they were going to have to lay people off, as many community hospitals and rural hospitals are doing. Um, but they found a way in which they could keep uh, their people employed by bringing in COVID-19 positive cases from surrounding counties. Uh, most of them are nursing home patients. So as of this morning, they had 18 positive COVID-19 cases being treated at the Elmore Community Hospital. I think there were five other patients that were uh, under investigation, which means I think they were waiting on a test result. Uh, so 23 total people, they have a capacity of 49 beds available for COVID-19 patients. So they're well below 50% capacity. The key statistic here is that zero of those patients are from Elmore County. So that to me indicates that we have been successful locally. Stay at home order had two objectives, flatten the curve and prevent overwhelming of our medical resources and our hospitals. We have been successful in doing that in Elmore County. We will continue to be successful doing that in Elmore County and we hope that though that we as we continue to do that that we will be given the opportunity to open on our terms on what our citizens need and what our citizens are capable of doing okay and one last thing before we go what is the financial status within our state or within our county so far being closed down where do we stand and what can you tell us yeah, that, that's a great question i get asked that a lot we are in great financial position as a county. This particular pandemic has not impacted us as much as others uh, because we're not dependent on sales tax revenue. Um, we've been able to uh, maintain all of our uh, employees. We have no intentions of laying anyone off. We've done a great job fiscally over the last several years and even previous county commissions in building up reserves. Uh, we have well over $5 million in reserves that are not allocated to any particular uh, project or anything in our county. So we are well positioned. Unfortunately, there are some municipalities who are dependent on tourism, sales tax dollars, et cetera. And that's where we're starting to hear of, you know, some government officials having to make some tough decisions. And so we hope that, uh, that our local municipalities won't face that here in Elmore County. We're gonna do everything we can as a county commission to support them. Okay, and as we close, what is your message to the folks here in Elmore County? What do you want them to know about this? Well, I want the citizens of Elmore County to know that we appreciate them. They've done a tremendous job over the last six weeks in building up uh, support for one another. They've supported the local businesses as best they could. They've ordered takeout. They've done all the things that we would want them to do. And that's what I expect them to do because our citizens always come out to support one another in storms, disaster relief, whatever it may be. They do a great job and we're doing a great job now. We are going to fight. We are going to work as a county commission to find creative ways to support those local businesses that have been and will continue to be affected by this new 
safer at home order, we're going to work. We're going to work with our mayors and come up with ways that we can help our citizens and encourage them to support them. We're here for you. We will continue to protect the health, protect the economy, and protect our civil liberties. Uh, we're committed to doing that. I personally am committed to doing that. And I hope and pray that we will all come out stronger because of this. Well, thank you so much for your leadership. Um, we wanna thank all the commission members in Elmore County and Otaga County and for putting out that great letter and for believing in the citizens of this county that we are responsible and we're gonna do our best to keep ourselves safe and our loved ones safe as well. So thank you so much for your time. All right, thank you, Becky.